All right, we're now going to get into systems of graphing in your graphing systems of linear inequalities. In this one, it's a little bit hard. I'm given a three by three, well, not really three by three, three by two. System of inequalities where I'm given three equations only with variables x and y. You won't be having to worry about x, y, z. Fear not. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh my god, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to start with the easiest equation. I'm going to make them all really be equal signs. So y is greater than negative 4. He's really just graphing the line y equals negative 4. Easy peasy. y equals negative 4. Well, I'm at the y-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm at the negative 4 spot. Now, before, I also looked at the inequality and whether or not it's going to be a dotted or a straight or shaded line. So when it's y is greater than, there's no or equal to part. So I'm going to create a dot, dashed or dotted line. I'm not going to shade yet. I will get to that momentarily. The second equation is not in slope intercept form. So I'm going to need to adjust it. All right, so let's do that down here. We have 6x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 18. So let's bring the 6x over to the other side. So I have 18 minus 6x. And we divide everything by 3, leaving negative 3, I'm sorry, negative 3, leaving me with the, with the inequality y is greater than or equal to 18 divided by negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is positive 2x. So I'm really dealing with the equation here y equals negative 6 plus 2x. All right, so now I'm going to graph that one also. Let's do that one in red. All right, so in this one, my y-intercept here is going to be at negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, my slope is positive 2, so I'm going to go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. And so on. This one is or equal to, so it's nice because I can have a solid line. So when I go to connect these dots, that's all I need to do. I don't need to erase, I don't need to worry about that. Now I have to do the other equation. I'm actually going to erase the work that I just did because pretty soon I'm going to need this space right here. Alright, so y is less than 5 minus 1 half. So this one is not an or equal to, so I'm also going to have to create a dashed line. My y-intercept, though, is positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This one has a slope of negative 1 half. So I'm going to go down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. Kind of looks like an intersect, but not quite, because Miss Rudolph did not do it perfectly. Down 1, over 2. Down 1, over 2, and so forth. All right, so the next thing I have to worry about is the shading. So if you want to shade for all three of these equations, you're more than welcome to. Or what you can do is the bits and pieces. Starting with the blue line, y is greater than negative 4. Greater than means I shade up. So I'm really going to be shading above my blue line, okay? So I can start with this. Shading above my blue line, all right? But now I'm going to do some properties of elimination. This next one is really y is greater than or equal to, I'm sorry, this should be less than or equal to, because, oh, I did this one wrong. Okay, forgive me. I'm backtracking. So if it's 6x minus 3y, greater than or equal to 18, eventually I'm going to divide by negative 3, so I should have flipped the sign. Okay? So I'm subtracting 6x, so I have negative 3y, greater than or equal to 18 minus 6x. Divide everything by negative 3, so I can flip the sign when it's an inequality like that. Don't make the mistake Miss Rudolph just did. And that gave me my lovely equation. So this time, it's less than. It is less than. So this time, this is my green line. It should be below my green line. So I can erase this part of my purple equation because it does not help me satisfy that inequality. The last one I'm going to look at is my red one. 
5 minus 1 half. When he is less than, he's underneath the line. So he should be shaded below here. I can now erase all this other part of my purple. All the other part is gone. And this kind of leaves me with this space in here. All right, so it left me with that little shaded in region right over there. That is the system solution. Solution is plural. So now sometimes I can ask you for something called intersection points. And this is going to be helpful for you later on. But I'll cover these now. All right, so define intersection points for solutions, or solutions, because some of them don't have or equal two parts. You need to set each equation equal to one another. This is going to be easy because one of them, we have y is equal to negative 4. All right, and once again, I took away my inequalities. So for one of them, or two of them actually, when I pair the first equation with the third equation, I can just plug negative 4 in for y. So negative 4 equals 5 minus 1 half x. And I also will do that for the second one. When I bring in that 5 over, I'm left with negative 9 is equal to negative 1 half x. I can divide both sides by negative 1 half. And negative 9 divided by negative 1 half is going to be positive 18. That gives me one of my solutions to be 18 comma negative 4. X and Y. All right. I also got to pair the second equation with the third equation. And I'm doing the easy ones because I already know for the third one that y is negative 4. So, using my third equation, and let's use the new one, we have negative 4 equals negative 6 plus 2x. I'm going to add 6 on the both sides, and that gives me 2 is equal to 2x. Okay. And then I divide both sides by 2, and that gives me that 1 is equal to x. So my other solution will be 1, negative 4. But I'm not done yet, actually. I still have to do, ooh, what's this? Yeah. Okay, so I still have to do the other part of the equation. The other equation I have to do are 1 and 2 paired together, so I'm actually going to erase the bottom part of this and work down here. So I pair numbers 1 and 2 together. To solve these two systems together, I got both of them set equal to y, and because they're both equal to the same value, I can actually set their equations equal to one another. So 5 minus 1 half f is equal to negative 6 plus 2x. So what I can do now I can add 6 on both sides, so that leaves me with 11 on this side, and I can add 1 half. So I have 11 equals, let's say, 2.5x. Alright, so we divide both sides by 2.5, and so we have 11 divided by 2.5 equals my x value. And now I need a calculator. Eleven divided by two point five. Well, that is equal to twenty two fifths. Okay. So now that's my x. I still need my y. So I'll need to plug it back into the original equation. So y is equal to negative six plus two times twenty two fifths. And all I need to do is type that into my calculator. Be careful with your parentheses. And I get that y is equal to 14 fifths. So another solution I have is 22 fifths and 14 fifths. Now this wasn't asked in your paper, but I just wanted to show you how to do it. 